Romans chapter 7. You would think if you read along in Romans that Paul forgot he wrote this whole chapter about death to sin because he starts talking about marriage and divorce. But remember, when this was written, there were no chapters and verses. So, he says, Do you not know, brethren, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that's Romans 7.1, that the law has jurisdiction over a person as long as he lives. For the married woman is bound by law to her husband while he's living. But if her husband dies, she's released from the law concerning the husband. So then, if while her husband's living, she's going to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she's free from the law. So she's not an adulteress, though she's joined to another man. So he's talking about physically in the world. This is the way it works in the world system. If a woman is married to a man, and while she's married to him, she has relations with another man, she's an adulteress. But if that first husband dies and she has relations with another man, she's not an adulteress because he's passed away. All right, we understand that. Now he's going to talk about spiritually what that illustrates. Therefore, my brethren, verse 4, you were made to die to the law through the body of Christ, that you might be joined to another, to him, Jesus, who was raised from the dead, that we might bear fruit for God. For while we were in the flesh, the sinful passions aroused by the law work in the members of our body to bear fruit for death. But now, we've been released from the law. How are we released from the law? Having died to that by which we were bound, so we serve in the newness of the Spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Now, if you understood that reading through there, I will tip my hat to you because I probably had to read this thing 30 times asking God to help me understand what in the world was He talking about. And let me just illustrate it for you and then, uh, and then we're going to go home. What He was saying as He illustrated a woman who's married to a man and is unfaithful that she's an adulteress. But if the husband dies, even though she does the exact same act, it, she's not an adulteress now. So, Paul says, all of that is illustrating this. You and I were born with a sin nature married to this world system. The Bible says Satan is the god of this world. He is in charge of this world system. We just read in 1 John 2 that if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. It's not talking about the mountains and the trees and the desert and the cactus. It's talking about getting even with your neighbor, holding grudges, being exalting yourself over others, uh, being unforgiving, all of those things. Those are the things of the world system. We are all born under the law, married to this world system. We come along and we hear how Jesus died to pay for our sins and we could be forgiven and we could have eternal life and know God. And we said, yes, Jesus, I want to be married to you. I want you to be my husband. And so everyone starts out, in my opinion, in spiritual adultery. We're married to this world system. We're hearing about Jesus and we want to walk with God. But we're in this place that Paul describes later in Romans 7 where the thing we want to do, we don't do. We do the very thing that we hate. I used to say, oh, Paul's just like me. But I have good news for you. Romans chapter 8 comes after Romans chapter 7. I was so smart when I figured that out. <laughs> he didn't stay living in Romans 7. Where the thing I want to do, I don't do it. Do the very thing that I hate. He says it will deliver me from this. Jesus will. How? Because we have to die to our first husband. So we're not in spiritual adultery. We're married only to Jesus. God is such a genius that He put these things here. But I'm telling you, I never heard this in Bible college. I never learned it in seminary. When I read these very words to the Baptist College in Oregon, it was the most controversial thing that had ever been spoken there to talk about that God really wants us to overcome sin and be devoted to Him. 
But that's because the teachings of men have nicely set aside the commandments of God. So we're going to be studying about spiritual adultery uh, next week. And hopefully this will begin to make sense to you that this is a miserable place to be, but it's where we start out. And as Jesus becomes more and more Lord in our lives, we die to that first husband so that we're married only to Jesus. And the day will come if our government comes to put me to death for what I have said, that I'll be able to say like Stephen, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Because I want to be married to Jesus. In Jesus' name.